Marcus Deegan Show. <laughs> Guess who's back? Back again. What's the story, guys? Welcome to another episode of the podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Today's episode is proudly sponsored by Tidal Sport Plant Powered Cryotherapy Recovery Spray. Now, listen, this is the game changer. A blast of cold like you've never felt before. If you're injured, the key to getting to getting your inflammation down, to getting rid of your pain is this product here. I tried it. I used it. I've suffered from a broken neck. This stuff was the game changer. It changed everything for me. Titlesport.com. We've got a massive competition coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to uh, share those details with you a little bit later on in the podcast. Uh, how could we forget? Today is also proudly sponsored one of our brand new sponsors, CryptoCorns NFTs. Now, this is an NFT company straight out of Ireland. Now, let me tell you something. If you guys are into NFTs, these are some of the most exclusive ones on the market today. They haven't been released, but they will be. These guys are going to come on. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about cryptocurrency. We're going to talk about it. Can we put them up there? There we go. So what do we got? We got the clown there. I'm going the wrong way here. We got the clown. What else we got there, Ian? Oh, yeah. This is one of my favorite ones, the Mafia Boss. And check this one out. The Crypto Slice MMA Fighter. NFTs, basketball, as you can see, all available real, real soon. We're so proud and we're so honored to have them on as a sponsor. Today's guests are going to be fed by the Aussie Project Meat Pies, A Taste of Australia, meat pies, chicken pies, curry pies, sausage rolls, lamingtons, you name it. Anything from Australia. If you've never tried an Australian meat pie, then you've got to try one. It will change your life. It will change your mind on what good food is. The Aussie Project, make sure you go and give them a follow. And of course, today's episode is proudly fueled by... In Ireland, the highest form of compliment in any pub is an insult. So I'm considered quite complimentary. <laughs> Proper number 12, Irish whiskey. <laughs> we are back. Welcome to the podcast, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a minute since I've been back in the studio. We've been jumping hurdles for the last nine months, but I'm proud to say that we are back here at the beautiful Show Creator Studios in Las Vegas, Nevada, Sin City, the place of bright lights and world title fights. Today on the podcast, we've got a couple of amazing guests, and I'm really, really excited to talk to them. You know, the good thing about this show is that I get to sit down one-on-one -on -one with these uh, elite athletes from, from the top organizations of the world. Now, these guys come in here, they take their time out of their day to sit down, have a chat, we can get in their head a little bit, find out the ins and outs of the UFC. See their lives and what they do. It's going to be great. Uh, we've got the birthday boy on the show today, so I'm going to do a little bit of an intro. Uh, so this guy fought late notice on his debut performance in the UFC, UFC 48 at the Apex. He came all the way from Boston to move here to follow his dream. He's one of those guys that's got a really great personality and knows how to talk. As far as I'm concerned, I really think that we need more of those guys here in the sport. Uh, he's going to be fighting at UFC 278 on August 20th on the Kamara Usman Leon Edwards card. Uh, would you please put your hands together and welcome to the show. They call him the Joker, UFC Bantamweight. Give it up for Jay Perrin. What's the story, brother? Hello. Thank you, brother. How are you? I'm good. How are you, man? Are you uh, handling this Vegas heat? Oh, you know what? If you're from New England, you know that it's hot there, but it's like it's like 80 there all the time. But this humidity is so terrible that like it's I, I can take 110 degrees with no humidity in it. So how long have you been in Vegas then? I moved here last April, so like a month, like a year and like two months. So you there. came out here, you didn't know anybody. Nobody. You had no friends. Nope. No dog. Nope. No girlfriend. Nope. So you just came out here on your own to pursue your dream. I got I got broken up with and then I left. Okay. I like, oh <laughs> that God, always where? helps. I dumped and then I'm like out. Yeah. So. Yeah. And how old are you? I'm I just turned 29. Yes, uh, two days ago. Happy birthday. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna look after this birthday boy with some presents here today. You know. So happy birthday, my friend. <laughs> uh, how, how's the hangover? Oh, it's great. It was a great time. I, you know what? I, well, I just didn't get any sleep the night before for whatever reason. I just felt terrible for yeah. no reason. But uh, uh, no, it was good. It was a good time. I'm not. A, I'm not a huge drinker, but I'll go out and yeah. and do stuff. So, so you say that you, you you know you didn't get much sleep. If you're going into a big fight yep. the night before that, let me ask you a question. Back in the day, they used to refrain from having sex before a huge fight. <laughs> is that bullshit, or is that something that you do, or is that something that the fighters do? I was always interested I've, in that. I've so like the way that I see it is that if you. If you have a lot of sex during camp, like if you have a, a spouse or whatever and you're having sex all the time, then don't change that. You know what I mean? That's just the thing that you're doing. Yeah. But if you change your routine too much and like you say you're having sex all the time and then the week of you're just like, nope, 
Yeah. That's going to change the composition of your body. So right. For me, if I know that I'm not having a ton of it, you just don't do it. I'm just going to stay away yeah, from it. Yeah. And honestly, by the time fight week comes up, I am exhausted. So right. I don't, I don't care about that so much anymore. You know. So to move to a new state where you didn't know anybody, first of all, it takes a lot of balls. Um, second of all, you were you were coming here to be uh, in the UFC, the the prime number one promotion in the world when it comes to combat sports. Mm -hmm. um, you've been in a lot of organizations prior to that. You were the uh, you were the Bellator. You're in Bellator CES uh, in Combat Zone, Cage Titans. You were the champion in CSS. Uh, yep, at CES I was the champion, and CES H and Cage Titans I was also. And Cage Titans. Um, so obviously you've had a pretty extensive career as mm -hmm. far as you've had a lot of fights. What does it take to get to the top level of UFC? Uh, absolute 100% dedication, dis despite having no motivation you know there's going to be days there are so many days a week where i wake up and i go and there's the first thoughts that flood my head are i don't want to fucking do this i really just don't want to do this so how do you change that mindset you do it anyway you just you yeah, but just, how you but just, how you just have to just you just like i feel like consistency creates that right. you know what i mean so like yeah. after like maybe it gets uh, like tough to do stuff at first you yeah. know what i mean like to just start the routine like yeah. anybody that's like starting out at any gym not even just like a an MMA gym, it's hard to get in, it's hard getting to the gym, but once you get there, yeah, it's easier to to do. So as soon as you, you know, get into that routine, yeah, I think it becomes easier for you to do. I think it's just starting that's the hard So thing. being in all those other promotions that you're in is it's a huge step up to go to the UFC. Obviously, like obviously the production, um, the money I'm sure is a lot better, the status that you get. Can we talk about your last fight a little bit? Absolutely. Because I know you took it on short notice. You were going up against a Top 15? I would say he, he will be a top 15 guy soon. He didn't finish you. It went to a decision. Mm -hmm. You weren't, Were you happy with your performance, being it was your debut and you didn't win? I mean, everybody wants to win in their debut. You know what I mean? Yeah, short notice or not. And for me, like, for me, the whole people are like, yeah, but six days, yeah, but six days. For me, it's like, hey, man, I accepted the fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, six days or not six days, I should have been able to perform and win in my eyes. When I watched the fight back, like, an hour and a half later, I was at least happy maybe i didn't get the win but um in today's world it doesn't seem like wins matter all the time right as long as you're entertaining mm. and um that's really what i want to be known for yeah. you know maybe i won't ever be the best ever there ever was but i want to know that people look back on my career and go this guy knew how to scrap in every way shape and form yeah. like there was no one person that just had an easy time beating this person so um if you beat me you earn it you know what i mean i think mario earned it um like I said, he's a top 15 guy. It's not a guy to, to bow your head at when you lose to him. You mm. know what I mean? And I lost by decision. Yeah. I don't agree with the scorecards, but... You uh, didn't agree with them? I did not. They 30 26 me. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what part of that fight was 30 26? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't make sense to me at all. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, like I said, it was disappointing, but like when I walked back, I like my combinations were good. I could have probably done a little bit more with my takedowns, but, uh... He, he's a great wrestler. He comes from, you know, he was a Henry Cejudo... Um, student at one point so like I knew his wrestling was probably going to be top notch and yeah. boxing was where I was going to get him so uh, it was just a few adjustments to make and I've done that so you know like I said give me time to prepare they have given me time to prepare now like tons of it mm. so um, I'm going to show up and give everybody what I got I think one thing that I really respect about these athletes that are in these combat sports is that you guys really know your mindset is like such a strong point that you have and you really can handle well, maybe I'm just saying this out of context because I don't really know. You handle loss quite well. Like for the average guy like me, you lose something. It didn't – like I can imagine if I went for my debut and, and lo that would – did you go home that night and lie in bed and were you, were you pleased with yourself or were you like, fuck, damn, I just – you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I was like, a baby. I was, I was like in the back. I was crying. Yeah. Uh, Coach Wood, uh, shout out to John Wood. Happy birthday, John Wood. Happy birthday, Johnny Wood. Um, he, he's, like, he's like, look, man, you did great. You know what yeah. I mean? You showed me. And that was – he was really the one that really – made me feel better about it because he's like, look, man, you impressed me in a lot of ways. I didn't expect all of that to come from you. Yeah. You know, even um, a certain UFC fighters that are kind of, I think uh, Sean O'Malley, who was Mario's uh, teammate at one point or is now, says, hey, I didn't expect him to put up such a fight. Yep. So, like, you know, um, the first couple hours, I kind of was like, I don't want to see anybody. I lost. You know what I mean? I, what am I going to celebrate? Right. Of thing. Um, and then I watched it back and, and hearing John tell me, he's like, hey, man, you did really well. You proved you at least belong in there yeah. with uh, with top-level fighters. So uh, that's – taking loss is uh, inevitable here. Like there's no – like unless you're Khabib, you know, there's been one guy mm -hmm. who's ever really been undefeated. So yeah. Yeah. Um, 
you're going to lose. You yeah. know what I mean? And some days it's just not your day. And um, we fail so much in this sport in practice, never mind just in competition, that it just becomes the norm. How do we come back from those failures and make ourselves better? And I think that through that we become better people and um, face adversity in our own lives um, better through the sport that we do. So I think that we we suffer failure so much that it's just common and to to – drown yourself in it has never helped anybody so to just kind of have the mindset of all right i didn't do well this time i'm gonna move on and do my best the next time and the thing is you're in the fucking ufc <laughs> you're in the best promotion in the world what yeah. how many people do they have on the roster now a thousand something like that so out of a thousand people in the entire world, world. you are one of them. one of them yeah. you're one of them so that in in a sense is an achievement that in a sense is something that you can look back on and you can tell your kids I was in the UFC, so, yeah. I mean, fair play to you, bro. Do, you. Um, so we're going live today. I don't know if you're watching us live on Facebook, but we are. Oh, and hell. do we have some questions up there, Ian? All right, here we go. From Shane McDonald. Hey, Marcus, hope you're well. Love to see you over in Ireland one of these days at the show. And definitely. Is Black a place? Oh, the Black oh. Forge Inn. Okay, that's okay, a pub yeah. in Dublin, Ireland. I would love to go over there. Just says it. visit black on yeah. the screen. Yeah. So I'm like, what does that mean? What does that I've mean? done that a couple of times oh, in my Jesus. life. Not too many. <laughs> um, so, you know, I was... Uh, the, the what? Oh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, if you're watching it on Facebook, do me a favor, share the show on your page. Uh, let everybody know that we're going live. It's the first time that we've gone live, so I'm pretty excited about it. So thanks very much. Okay, I'm going to... Um, I want to talk about your upcoming fight. When do you start camp? Oh, I've been, I didn't. So that's the thing about me is that if I lose, I take it to heart like a lot. So like, um, I'm very self accountable. I have not stopped training since really the last fight. So like yeah. I've been going hard as hell. I got still got like nine weeks and I'm in the best shape I've ever been in. So like right now, what I wanted to focus on was start early, you know, when I get a fight, you know, cause I, I was honestly prepared for them to give me another short notice fight. So I was like, all right, if they call me back, I need to be ready. So I need to kind of like lean out and stuff. Um, so I started a month and a half ago, right. really, it's, uh, just to be prepared. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm good now. I I I'm right now. What's just really cool about that is that I I can just focus on the game plan and like what I'm going to do or how to react to his move motions and studying my opponent rather than I need to lose weight, I need to be in shape, and then do all of those things. So I have like nine weeks of just mental mm -hmm. preparation because my body's already kind of there. You know what I mean? That's interesting that you say that because that was going to be one of the next things I touched on is is the mental effect of this game and especially the mental effect of um, not only going into camp and knowing that you have to go in and, and face someone that's potentially trying to kill you, mm -hmm. but um, you've got the weight cut, which is obviously something that can destroy your brain mentally. Mm -hmm. um, so so uh, mindset is a huge thing in combat sport. Mm -hmm. Probably as as important as your physical Mm -hmm. um, can you can you talk about that the mindset? So, uh, in what regards? So just well, like just how we go into it. So or? have you always had a positive mindset? Have you always manifested stuff no. like? So did you know that you were going to be in the UFC one day? Did you see it in your head? Did you did you dream about it and fantasize? <sighs> when about When I was it? fourteen, I started training. So I've been training a long, long time. I'm twenty nine now, so almost fifteen years. Yeah. Um, uh, but mindset wasn't always that way. It was, you know, uh, doubt is the dream killer, as I say it. So, like, doubt creeps up in your head really, really fast. And the second that you allow it to, it'll control you. Right. Um, I've known, I remember I had a teacher. He was, you know, uh, almost like an adopted dad of mine. Um, he had me write down my dreams and what I really wanted most when I was, like, 15 years old. And I've still kept the, he had said, what do you want most? And I wrote down on this piece of paper, I'm going to be in the UFC. I'm going to be one of the best in the world. And since then, I've held on to that. I still have the piece of paper. Wow. Um, yeah, I still have it. So um, I, don't, I don't know if I believed in manifesting at one point, but I believed in myself enough to know that um, I could do anything I put my mind to. And, I, again, when you grow up, right, people tell you, you know, you can be anything you want as long as you work hard enough. And I really, that was personal for me. I said, oh, well, everybody told me that I, if I chose to do one thing and I decided that this is it, I'm going to work my ass off for it, I will get it, you know? And so yeah. that was just kind of something that, that started with me when I was young, yeah. really young. Which gym are you training at here in Vegas? Syndicate. Oh, yeah, that's a great gym. Yeah. Um, gang, gang. Yes, that's right. So tell me about the nickname, the Joker. Where did that come from? Uh, the same teacher. So yeah. um, when I was a kid, um, I've... To not like be depressing, but uh, I've had, no. We want to. I want to hear that. As a <laughs> as a uh, as a young kid, I I really I 
suffered with a lot. I'm a big mental health advocate um, because I've I've been in some to some hospitals when I was younger, um, and so he gave me the the nickname the Joker because um, of the guy's mental illness and what he wanted to to tell me was basically that the Joker accepts himself for who he is no matter what. And I, I again big comic book nerd, so I'm gonna weeb out on you for a second. There's um uh, a book called The Killing Joke, which is basically about Batman and the Joker's like final battle. And uh, at, there's this one scene where uh, Batman pretty much tells the Joker, he's like, hey, we don't have to do this anymore. We can get you some help, you know what I mean? And for the first time, uh, the Joker really breaks his character and goes, listen, this is the way I am. I like who I am. Even though I'm evil, even though you don't agree with it, this is who I am, mm. and I accept myself or even the darker parts of myself. And that was the kind of thing that latched me onto the Joker, was that even though he was an evil person to other people, he accepted himself um, for the flaws that he had. So I kind of held on to that. And then after my teacher passed away, I just kept it in, I like in honor that. of him. I really like that. And um, I saw you checking out my Spider-Man before, so I kind of yeah, figured yeah. out. Oh, yeah, he's a bit of a Star Wars back. Oh, you got the too? Star yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're into anime though, right? Hunt, all my tattoos are pretty much anime. If you're an anime character, what would your name be? Oh, that's tough. <laughs> be something ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Well, what is it about anime that, that, that attracts you? So when I was younger, my... my my little brother um, is autistic, or he has, he's high-functioning autistic, so he, uh, he didn't have a ton of friends growing up, so basically he was into comic books and manga books, and he didn't have a lot of people to, to talk to, and, um, you know, my brothers and myself and even my dad weren't really into things like that at one point, so he didn't have anybody to talk to, so I started to read these things so that I could have conversations with my brother a little bit more and be closer to him, because yeah. he's very important to me, so... Um, that was basically it. It was just a way to, for me to bond with my brother at one mm. point. And then the storytelling is very good. If you can get past the fact that it's animated, um, the things that they say in these shows, in these books, are pretty profound, to be honest with you. Right. I could give you like a couple of anime villains that yeah. say stuff, and you're like, this guy's making points. You know what I mean? Even as an adult. So mm. um, I think a lot of the people have problems with it because, again, it's in Japanese and um, yeah. it's a cartoon. But if you actually get past that and look at what they're saying in it, there's a lot of real-life reflections yeah. in society that they pick up on those. So I really like the, the undertones of it and like the messages they try and say. Is your brother back in Boston? Yeah. Yeah? Do you get to talk to him and see him a lot? We're not very chatty, you know. When I do, when I do see him at home, he is. Uh, we at the second we start start seeing each other, it's just yeah. nonstop. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's like an unspoken thing. I I love my brother. He knows. Um, I love him, and he loves me. So, um, I don't know. We're not super chatty, but yeah, we talk occasionally. You know? Yeah, you must miss your family. I do, I do. I mean, uh, they know why I'm here. You know what I mean? It sucks sometimes to be alone. You know, on yeah. my birthday, it would have been nice to see all of my family at least yeah. a little bit. But um, I got a lot of support from home. I got a lot of people sh shipped me a bunch of stuff. So um, just knowing that I'm on people's minds is is enough yeah. for me to know that I'm important enough for people to do that. And I suppose as you get a little bit older, it, you don't really think like I don't really give a shit about my birthday now. Like I'm, I'm no, it, it doesn't does, like literally the older you get, you don't really. I'm care 29. About it. You just you dread it a little yeah. bit. You're like, yeah. oh, I'm one one year closer to death. Yeah, solid. You yep. know, now 30s coming up. I mean, I've already looked up tombstones. You know what I mean? How much do they cost? <laughs> I've actually thought about just buying a casket and sleeping in it for like a week to get yeah. used to that. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Um, well. You know what? I'm going to hook you up with a couple of presents here today. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, I don't know if you're injured anywhere. Have you got? Any, are you sore anywhere? All the time. You are going to love this, bro. Awesome. Okay, so this is the cryotherapy spray. This is the cream. So if your elbow or your knees, this is mm. the cream. We'll give you one of our hats there. And one of my favorite parts of the show, uh, I like to call it the passing of the proper. I was given the opportunity to be able to gift my guests with some of the tastiest, finest whiskey this side of Dublin. So, my friend. Oh, let's go. Happy birthday to you oh. on behalf of myself and uh, Proper 12 Irish Whiskey. Thanks, Connor. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you. Enjoy that, man. Have you tried that yet? I haven't, actually. I haven't yeah. actually, You know, I see, the, see it all the time, but, like, I never think of, like, taking shots of whiskey kind of yep. like that. So um, I, I am a whiskey guy, though. So well, I, I you're going to love this, man, so... No, I, oh no! I'm gonna I'm gonna crack into this maybe later. <laughs> Happy birthday! Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming on, man. I really, really do. Uh, I'm gonna mention a couple of names. Uh, you mentioned Sean O'Malley before. Who's your dream fight? I know a lot of journalists ask who would be your dream fight. If you could pick one person that, if you could say, okay, I want to fight him tomorrow, who would it be? I mean, I would fight John O'Malley for sure, just yeah. cause, just cause. Um, but anybody that pays me the most money, to be honest with, you. I mean, uh, fighters are mercenaries, so yeah. basically it's. 
if you pay me enough, I'll I'll fight anybody. Dream yeah. fight though. Who do I think I could beat? I guess I honestly think I could beat anybody on yeah. Monday. Yeah, right. But, um, Sean O'Malley. I like T.J. Dillashaw yeah. just because I've looked up to the not because obviously this the EPO thing, but um, <laughs> I when I was a younger cat, I modeled a lot of how I moved around T.J. and like how he moved right. his feet and so you emulated he, him a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, so like so like you know, um, I've just always looked up to his style and like yeah. how he moves and how efficient he is. Yeah, so I'd really like to. I like the oh, you know who I do want to fight? Adrian Yanez. That's right. Who. Okay, I was going to mention his name. I don't disrespect him i actually you know there's certain people that you want to fight just because they're really good yeah and you're like ah yeah. i really want to step in and see where i measure up to this yeah. person i still think that he's got holes in his game that are exploitable and i think i'm a little bit more um what am i diverse diverse, diverse in my in my yeah. attack um but he's so precise and so clean yeah and like his timing is so so good that it's something you want to test yourself against. That's basically it. So like mm. that's that's the one that anytime his name pops up, I'm like, oh, I just want the smoke from this guy, right? Just to see where I'm at. You know what I mean? Because he's gonna be another. That's another guy that's gonna be a top fifteen guy mm. in the division very soon. You know what I mean? You could see him fighting. I could see him fighting Sean O'Malley. I could see him fighting Mario Batista or any yeah. of these people. Yeah. Um, any day of the week. So um, that's just somebody that I'd really like to eventually, with time. Maybe I'm not more to clearly not in the same path right now but if it should ever align i would love to fight adrian Yanez for sure what's your time span like how long do you plan to stay in the sport and what's your goal do you want to be champ do you want to you want to make as much money as you can both of those things perfect um either or would be great yeah. obviously everybody wants to be ufc champion uh, it's nice to get i'm one of those people that's like all right i did this now what you know what I mean? Now what am I going to do? Yeah. You know, I made it to the UFC. I remember when I, after my last fight, I was like, all right, I'm here now. I spent 10 years to get here, and now I don't know what to do. Now, right, now right. I'm here. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, how do you chase something for 10 years, then get it, and then go, well, shit, I didn't plan this far ahead. Yeah, yeah. So I would like to be champion, obviously. Who wouldn't? I'd like yeah. to break the top 10. Right. So right now mm. I'm just taking it one goal at a time, top 15, top yeah. 10, you know, and then see where it takes me, you know? Um but money, for sure. You know, we're prize fighters at the end of the day, and I think that the sport has gotten more businessy, yeah. and fighters are starting to um, advocate for themselves a lot more. I'm obviously not in a position to talk about my pay right now. So, yeah. and again, I've I got paid plenty of money. You know what I mean? It's most money I've ever made in one fight. So yeah. I can't complain too much. I'm in the UFC. I got paid better. Yeah. Yeah. But and with time, obviously, of you know what I mean. You obviously want to get paid more and yep. more. You don't want to be so like the Sean O'Malley thing. As much as I maybe he's a character, I'm not exactly in line with. He makes points about, hey man, I'm winning. You know, if I'm winning, why am I not getting paid more? Yeah, you know what I mean. Why yep. am I, why am I fighting top ten guys for less than top fifteen money? Mm. Does that make sense? Yep. So, no, absolutely. I really, I, I like Aljamain Sterling came out. He's like, I have I, the the fight with TJ Dillashaw. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Aljamain is gonna fight TJ if TJ Bill hasn't signed that contract. Yet okay, because he says, hey, why am I making the same flat rate? That I did last time for my last fight when I did all the promotion and I did all of this. And he's just advocating for himself, which I right. think that as soon as more fighters start to do that in force, things will start to go that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously I'd like to be paid. If I can't be a champion, I'd like to live comfortably. Yeah. So for me, the end goal is, and I know that a lot of people don't have end goals. They just go to fighting and then they, there's nothing for after. And yeah. that's where you find a lot of fighters get lost when they retire. Mm -hmm. I want to open my own facility right. and train and be around martial arts my whole life. Martial arts saved my life. You know, yeah. I'd be a much different person if I didn't do this. So you've implemented a lot of uh, – martial arts has been implemented into your day-to-day -day life Every with – with with um, obviously the discipline, um, mm -hmm. the respect, and uh, just the the calmness of it all as well. Correct. Yep. yep. Of course, yeah. you always leave the gym less angry than you enter it. You yeah. know what I mean, and I think that's a a big distinction. You know what I mean? Going to the gym and just hitting a bag for fifteen minutes will save your day if you need right. it. So, um, like I said, I uh, martial arts gave so much back to me mm. that I feel like it's my responsibility to share what I was given to others. Yep. So, like. Um, I don't need to be a rich man, like a super rich man. I just like to live comfortably and do what I love to do for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? Which is teach and be around martial arts and the thing that I love that I've loved for my entire life. Yeah. You know, and obviously make a, a good amount of money doing it. But um, that's not really the point. So, like, I, I just love what I do so much that I don't ever want to – I don't see myself ever being in a place where I go work in a desk. You know what I mean? Like, I can't do that for myself. So I agree. I've, I've fought so hard for this, obviously, to get to this point. But the end goal is not just to be in the UFC and then fade off into the distance. It's to make a name for myself enough in the UFC. Like, this guy's worth working with and – 
managing my own team and kind of being a John Wood, if I may. Right. Does your mum watch your fights? Yes, she gets drunk when she does. <laughs> she gets very. She has a few chardonnays, as they say. <laughs> chardonnays, and then she uh, then she paces back and forth in the back. She yeah. has the security guards of every event. Oh, so she actually comes and watches. She'll the come. Oh, yeah, she'll come and watch them, but she'll, she'll pace back and forth in the uh, in the back. I think in the apex, she was there and she was behind the bleachers. Yeah, just doing this, asking the security. That's that right. That's on. great. And and what about dad? Does he come and watch it as well? Uh, dad does come watch. Uh, he didn't get. To to come the last time, but he does. He does come watch for sure. Yeah, yeah. My engineer's giving me the finger. What's up, bud? Oh, have, have we got a, have we got another guest coming in? Who is right. in? Uh, all right, Mister Perrin. I'm just going to give this guy a little bit. Of, you know what? Let me tell you something um, about these guys from the UFC. They are the elite. I mean, when it comes to discipline, mindset, strength and conditioning, there's no one better. Like these guys are the top of their game and I just love talking to them and I, I, I love, I feed off what they say. So I take everything in. Um, this next guy is, is a fantastic athlete. He's mm. definitely one of my favorite fighters. He's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You gotta, you gotta not drink when you say Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You say Brazilian. Uh, a Brazilian, is Brazilian, that what I say? Brazilian. <laughs> Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It's, it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, right. Same. <laughs> He's got an impressive record. Uh, 11 wins, two losses. Uh, he made his debut. He made his debut in the UFC at just 20 years old. Uh, like, mm. I don't know what you guys were doing when you were 20, but when I was 20 years old, I was an absolute dickhead. Driving around, who in cars, drinking, and smoking weed, sure. being an absolute all of it, head. all of it. Um, he just had a win over Felipe Colares. Uh, impressively, impressively, impressive, impressive win, impressive win. win. And he's known for punking Jorge Masvidal. Would you please, <laughs> would you please welcome to the podcast? He's uh, coming in via remote UFC featherweight, Mr. Chase Hooper. What's the story, brother? Hey, how's it going? Just uh, hanging out, waiting for summer to show up. Well, it showed up here in Vegas, mate. If you want to feel some of that heat, then you need to come here. Where are you right now? Uh, I'm up in Washington State. Like it's still it's still springtime weather here, so it's raining plenty. But uh, I'll be out for International in- Fight Week, so I'll get to enjoy a little bit of that. Yeah, I heard there's a lot of Sasquatch in Washington. Is that true? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen one. Not yet. So listen, can we just? I just want to talk about Ian. Do we have that little clip of uh, of Chase with Masvidal? For those of you guys that haven't seen it, this was really really funny. I loved it. Chase got to interview Jorge Masvidal, and uh, this was back in the day when he had that big, long, massive afro, which came out to about here, kind of very very similar to Ben Askren. And uh, we did get a chance to uh, get a little bit of a clip going. So this is really really funny, and we're going to pop that on. We got that up up there. Uh, Chase Hooper, punking Jorge Masvidal. Uh, Street Jesus, can I call you that? Sure. Okay. All right, so I got one question for you. Why'd you do that to my dad? <laughs> my father is uh, Ben Askren. Shout out. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to. Work. That's really your dad? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> is that uh, really your dad? <laughs> Did That's he really crazy. believe that was your dad, Chase? It's the curly hair. Yeah, I think so. Like that was pretty candid. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like we didn't set that up at all. Oh, yeah, I, I think the ones that uh, that that come out that are that are uh, not set up always come out the best. Now, you know what? I was watching your vlog the other day, man, and I just wanted to say I hope that you do more of those because there's nothing better than watching the build up, the weight cut, uh, the 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 fight week, the uh, the promotions, all the the press conferences. Um, you get to see a different side of the fighters. One thing that I kind of um, wanted to ask you about is I saw you on uh, Wonder Boy Thompson's uh, podcast, and I believe you guys were doing some. I believe it was the banana split submission. Did you invent mm. that? No, 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 no. That's that's well beyond my uh, pay grade. I just uh, I just have a lot of fun with it. Mm. Um, I think it's like more of a wrestling thing. But you know, if you rip it hard enough, then uh, you know they're not going to not tap. It's either that or they get their groin ripped apart. So oh, it's terrible. They, yeah, uh, think- it's a pretty easy choice usually. 
Awful. The groin injuries are pretty bad, and they take a long time to get over, too. And when I saw them, have you seen that banana split submission, 100%. Jake? 100%. I've been put in a banana split and yeah. by, like, a like a state champion wrestler or something like that. He's right. It's 100% awful. The whole, like, the whole way through. If you just hold it, I'm going to, it's going to yeah. feel like you're ripping your legs in half. They're going to go like this. Yeah, it's kind of like you're Terrible. doing the splits, and it just, the, you, yeah, it was it was, it was pretty awesome to watch. Um, Yeah, so it's interesting watching the vlog. One, one thing I really didn't know about uh, is the whole mouth guard, the way that you guys b- make the mouth guards. Is all done um, through the computer. Can you can you talk about that a little bit? I've never seen that. I've never seen that either, to be honest. Um, all the other mouth guards I've had, it's like the um, like for the amateur level, like the boil and bite. You uh, you know buy a fucking you buy a dollar mouthpiece, you throw it in a pot of boiling water, and then you shove it in your in your mouth. Yeah, and man. that forms it. Uh, some of the better ones are like more of a dental mold, so you have yeah. to like put this like tray in your mouth with like a putty type thing and then it'll uh get the mold of your teeth but uh yeah i think ufc is working with this company that uh essentially did like a 3d scan of my mouth um and it was pretty cool uh because they i don't know i'm not gonna not take the free stuff that they're offering so uh <laughs> yeah. i figured i'd try it out and uh yeah i don't know it's it's a pretty typical uh pretty typical fit and then it's nice to not have to like do the mold and all that. So it was mm. it was cool. And like I said, I I'd never seen that before. So you had a little bit of time off, Chase. Um, about a year, I believe it was. Was there a particular reason for that? Was it injury? I mean, I know you just recently got married, or was it just because the UFC hadn't give you a fight? Uh, yeah. So see, I fought in June of last year. And then got married in August, and they offered us a fight because uh, it was a late August, so it was like pretty much September by the time we got home from the honeymoon. And they offered us a fight in like mid October. Um, it didn't really work out timing wise, and it was in like Abu Dhabi or something, which would have sucked to fly out uh, all the way out there. So we were trying to be like, hey, like November, December, January, February, March, April. Any of those months would be perfect. And then uh, they came back with May. Um, obviously, it wasn't fun to have to sit sit out for that long. Like, that's the longest I've ever had between fights in my whole career um, to this point. But it was definitely good to just take that time off of, like, competition and really just focusing on, on raising my skill level, like, everywhere around, uh, like, just getting more well-rounded, not having to – focus on necessarily a specific opponent, but just, um, you know, trying to become a better fighter overall. And, uh, I feel like the, the extra time off was definitely good for that. I didn't have to worry about cutting weight or, you know, getting ready for a specific type of, uh, opponent. So yeah, it helped me. Uh, I feel like it helped me level up quite a bit and, and, uh, help my fight IQ. I think it for sure showed in your last fight. Definitely showed hey, the improvement you. that you had. Of course. Do you think that's an advantage is having a bit of time off as well so you can sh- you can hone your it's, sk- I think it's good to to be consistent but like at the same time yeah you need time you yeah. know what I mean like you need like you do, you put yourself through so much in a camp that like it's good to take a few months off yeah. you know what I mean it's you got to be a person sometimes you know right. what I mean like fighters are so caught up with how much like we do during camp that we forget to be people you know what I mean and like go off and have fun and like enjoy our lives outside of the gym so I think that between fights Take some time for yourself, yeah. decompress, and then when you're ready, it's time to go back. You know what I mean? Like, the, you miss it a little bit. When you miss something, it's easier to go back to, right? Yeah, but if you yeah. go right back into training after you just did, like, a two-month camp, you're going to be miserable for, like, half of that camp. So yeah, he has yeah. the right idea. Chase, I mean, you, you started the sport in the UFC, pardon me, so young, at, at 20 years old. My, What I want to really know about you is, is this is such a sport of – the mind as well as as well as the body. I was just talking to Jay about that. Where does you get that maturity from at such a young age? Because you seem well beyond your years. Uh, where did that come from? Was it your background growing up, or have you always been smart for your age? Um, I don't know. I I think I was always kind of like definitely one of the weirder, like you know, just nerdy kids. Like I don't know, just very self-motivated i guess um like not too social or anything so i would just kind of go to school get all that stuff done and then go train and then play video games in my spare time but like 
I definitely like didn't do a lot outside. So I was very focused on like, um, you know, just getting through the day so that I could go train and all that. Um, cause I started at like eight years old at, uh, doing jujitsu and stuff. So I, I've been at it for a minute and it's, it's just been like shifting the mentality of, of like, Oh, I, it's not an option to like, Oh, I get to go train or like, I, I can train tonight if I want, or I can take the night off. Like, that's just what you do. You just go to the gym every night at five and, and you get your, uh, put the work in and, uh, you know, I, I came up with, uh, my coach, I've been with him since day one and he's instilled like definitely a lot of life lessons, like kind of, I guess, taught me what it, what it is. I feel like to be a man and like mm. to be, I don't know the, the way that I would picture, um, you know, like being able to take care of all your business, like mm -hmm. independent, you don't need people like telling you what to do all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. so he definitely was a big help for that like just kind of adding the structure and like he was a little he was wild in his like younger days so it's like being able to like hear from people that you trust like yeah it's not necessarily worth uh you know going to the parties and like mm -hmm. chasing the girls all the time you know a little bit's fine but just you know it's not worth it at the end of the day and uh i don't know yeah i just really committed myself to training because that's really the thing that i enjoyed and like the thing that i looked forward to every day and mm -hmm. still do um yeah i don't know i just uh just made training like what i do and and not really an option and then uh just slowly took it fight by fight and uh got me here so i can't complain yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I've got two of these UFC athletes that I'm talking to today, and they've both told me that they are nerds. Well, guess what? Huge nerds. I'm a little bit of a nerd as well. I don't know if you know Jay uh, Chase, but he is a, a huge anime fan. He is uh, into the comic books. Uh, you said you're a nerd. What are you into? Uh, definitely more of a video game guy or like uh – uh I was peeping those uh, the stormtrooper helmets for sure. Yeah. See, 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 he's a man of culture. Yeah. I knew it. I knew uh -huh. it. Yeah. So, listen, I was listening to one of your interviews before. Um, I think it was maybe on Ariel Hawani. I can't remember. Um, Chase, do you feel like that you are now getting the respect that you maybe didn't think that you were getting before since you've been in the UFC? And if and if you are. Why didn't you think that you were getting the respect before? Was it because of your age? Um, I think it's been more of a mentality shift overall. Right. Um, at the end of the day, like, I don't need to impress anybody besides the three people that keep me on the roster. You know, Dana, Mick, Sean Shelby. Those are the guys that you have to impress. Those are the guys that, like, determine your worth i guess and uh yep. whether or not you stick around so those are the only guys that i'm really trying to impress at this point yep. um you know just making it look good for the bosses and that's been i think a little bit of maturing on my end it's it's definitely hard with like you know social media just follows you around everywhere now and and especially uh being thrown into it at such a young age like my contender fight I already had people in my comments like trash talking immediately after the fight. And I was 18 at the time. Yep. So having like, you know, hundreds of people, um, you know, just harassing you and stuff is, is definitely, um, it takes some adjustment and it's, uh, I don't know. It's kind of funny to look back on it, but like, it really stops bothering you. Like you, you have to like separate the fact that these people that are like telling you that you're trash or telling you that you're like the best in the world. Like they, neither of them know what they're talking about. Isn't it crazy to get to this height and then people that like work at Dunkin' Donuts or something like that tells us that we're trash. It's like, who, who are you? Yeah, what is happening? exactly. And I, I'll go down the rabbit hole sometimes. I'll like click on the mm -hmm. people's profiles and like look at them and be like, Oh, look at you dude. Like, yeah, well, Big man winner over here you, with that, you uh, winner you. Yeah, it's just oh, MMA fans, yeah. though, right? Is it just like MMA? Fa Look, I just want to address something to the fans out here, though, especially what he's talking about, talking shit, um, leaving comments and, yeah. and and stuff, and and hanging shit on. Unless you've been in the octagon in the UFC, unless you've done a weight cut, unless you've been training your whole life, I don't really think that you have the privilege to mm. talk shit to these guys. For one. You only do it online because you know you wouldn't do it face to face. Mm -hmm. So it's all the MMA fans out there, and I know they are very, very opinionated. Jay, there, there. It's, it's kind of like, all right. So if I go to the car to get my car fixed, 
I'm not going to tell the mechanic how to fix the car. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when people that don't do what we do tell us how to cut weight, how to do this, how to do that, with no experience, it just baffles me. Mm. It's like, where are you pulling this advice from? I just don't understand it. Yeah. You know what I mean? How dare you yeah. tell me how to do something that you've never done once? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy to me. Yeah. Well, I'll be, I'm, in, I'm in a different community, a few different communities. Obviously, the MMA community. I'm in the Marvel community, the Star Wars community. Mm -hmm. um, those... Those fans are great. When it comes to MMA, they're brutal. Uh, Terrible. Talking about loss, Chase. What did you? What was one of your main lessons that you learned after your last loss from Stephen Pearson? Mm. What uh, What did you learn from that loss, and 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 how did you get through that? Yeah. So that one bothers me so much because I feel like skill level to skill level wise, like I should have. Um, done significantly better in that fight than i did and it's like i've never made any excuses for anything um my mentality has been like if there was only one thing wrong like i could have you know like could have still won the fight so it's like a couple of things that like weren't lining up on my end there's never like um like whatever it is that i didn't do um was 100 percent on me but i didn't perform to the best of my abilities Mm -hmm. And whether that was a mental thing, whether that was a, uh, you know, what, whatever didn't line up, it's just recognizing that, like, I need to do that better for myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's also um, just, just kind of maturing in the sport a little bit, I guess, and realizing that I do still have a ton of time left. Like I'm yeah. fighting a lot of these guys that are in their prime physically. Um, yeah. And I'm still on the come up. So it's, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things where it doesn't weigh too heavily. Like you have to have a pretty short memory in this sport, yep. whether it's a win or a loss, like you can't mm -hmm. just uh, rest your laurels on it. You can't just like uh, ride off into the sunset. You're like, Oh, I won now. Life is great. No, you got to like, Get ready for the next one. Same thing if you lost. You just said that. Um, yeah. yeah. You just gotta let it go. It's kind of yeah. I don't know. That's that's been my main thing. So so from he's he's twenty. You're twenty two now, right, Chase? Mm hmm. So yeah. from twenty two till twenty nine. You. <laughs> how much growth was there for you from twenty two till twenty nine? Just, just mental. I mean, mental, just, right? Just like it's all a mental thing, to be honest. And and like things that you held on to in your earlier twenties, you just don't hang on yeah. to anymore. And like, um, I tell my students all the time when they're you know because there are people that get really hard on themselves. And like Chase said, I think that the losses don't hurt so much. If we were, if we know that we can, we, we did everything we could to try and win that fight and it just didn't work out, I think that's easier than watching yourself and then going, I should have done this, this, and this, and I would have won this fight. You know what I mean? Like, I knew I could have, but like, I think it's, we're so hard on ourselves and that's where it comes. And, um, but that being hard on ourselves helps us grow. Like, you have to be very honest with yourself uh, over time. And when you learn how to be honest with yourself without kicking yourself while you're down, the growth starts to come. So, from 22 to 29, I'm a far different fighter and how I approach things and I'm less emotional and I mm. I think more logically than I did before because it's a it's a profession. You know what I mean? This yeah. is our profession. It's not, you know what I mean? It's not the schoolyard. You know what I mean? And so like it's not somebody says something to like the fans, they say something to you. Yeah. And then you're like, you want to respond, but you're like, what is this? I'm just wasting energy. You know, what yeah. there's no reason for it. So I think as you get more developed and more mature in the sport you realize where your energy needs to be placed most and how honest you need to be with yeah. yourself yeah. in order to improve i mean chase seems like he's got his act together uh, at, at such a young at such a young age i'm this is why i wanted to talk to him because I, i'm just so fascinated how someone so young and i'm and I'm, I'm sure you probably get sick of everyone saying this to you chase oh you're so young you're so young you're so young but it's it's just it's just amazing to see how someone of that age has so much growth maturity mindset and is in the ufc at freaking 22 years old it's up to your every young fighter's dream to be honest with you, you was know. that always your dream chase to be in the ufc is that something that you visioned when you were a kid yeah, I, I think so. Like, uh, for a long time, I never really thought about it. But once I started getting into my early teens and stuff, and I started pursuing MMA a little more, it yeah. definitely uh, was on the forefront. And yeah. it, it came a lot quicker than I was really expecting. Like, I signed the contract for Contender. Um, I, I think I had six months of experience in my pro career wow. when I signed the contract for Contender. Wow. So it's a... Uh, and I had, like, four fights by then, so... 
it was mm -hmm. uh you know definitely like a quick quick jump into the deep end of the pool but you have to really like take these opportunities and you can't you know you can't say no maybe later because uh you never mm -hmm. know if that opportunity is going to ever show up again and i've seen that with a lot of guys um they don't take the fights that they should or they don't take these opportunities and then they spend the rest of their lives regretting it so it's mm -hmm. uh you know you, you have nothing to lose that's kind of been my mentality is is i i know that i would regret not taking the chances or like not taking these fights quite a bit more than i would uh like taking it and failing because then you at least are content with the uh, the fact that you put the effort in and that you took that leap of faith amen um even if it didn't pay off all the way mm -hmm. if, if you weren't a fighter if you weren't a professional athlete and I'm not saying you can be a video gamer here. What else do you think you'd be doing in life? Uh, I I was really like looking towards the military for a long time. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm pretty like disciplined. So like mm -hmm. some sort of structure, like very, uh, you know, workout intensive, I guess. Um, I always like stuff that like tests you a little more mentally. Like, uh, you know, at the gym when, when uh you know your coaches are like torturing you with some workouts it always makes me smile a little bit when they throw an extra set in or something like yeah i don't know that that was my uh that's the direction i thought i was heading for a long time and then uh you know i just kept winning fights and uh my i guess uh career goals switched a little bit and it's like well i i'm gonna take this as far as i can like like i said and and uh you know, it's an opportunity that nobody really gets to have. So I, I uh, have to make the most of it for myself, at least. Mm. Working in the UFC and being backstage with all these stars and athletes, is, is there someone that when you first saw them kind of made you go, oh my God, I cannot believe I'm fighting on the same card as this guy. Is there anyone that you could, uh, that, that really kind of like took you, your breath away, so to speak? Um, it might even be, it might be Damian Maya. Uh, I was on uh, <laughs> Ooh, the Phoenix card one. with him. He's such a cool dude. Um, yeah, I just had so much respect for him. And it, it was cool to, uh, like I've said in the past, like it's it's crazy that you go from like the local circuit to like you're, uh, you know, rubbing shoulders with these guys like Damian Maya or like just Adesanya. Legends. You know, it's, it's crazy. Um, it's crazy how fast that goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, well, listen, mate. You, I reckon you got the the ultimate job for any kid that 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 is training in mixed martial arts or combat sports. Um, I suppose you get a lot of young people looking up to you. If there was a piece of advice that you could give to someone young and up up and coming that maybe wants to be in the same position that you're in, is there a sentence, a word, a paragraph that you could just say to someone that might give them a bit of fire under their ass? I, th I think kind of just touching back with what I said earlier is like, you'll never regret taking these chances. Um, at least not nearly as much as you will uh, if you like avoid it. Like life is full of, you know, these scary moments and it's it's whether you face them or, or whether you turn away that kind of determines how you are able to view yourself and, and mm -hmm. feel about yourself. So I, mm -hmm. I think just trying to... Uh, you know, face those moments and uh, then you can, at the end of the day, you can just be proud of yourself for doing that. Mm -hmm. and that's more than most people will ever do in their lives. So, yeah. Well, there you go. That, I mean, that's it. So just real quickly, just before we go, uh, your next fight, have you got a date? Have you got a time? Have you got an opponent? What's the go? <coughs> to be determined. Uh, to I be don't determined. know. It's all on UFC's schedule. So I got to yeah. wait for them. Anyone in your and, sights uh, that you'd like? um no i i'm really uh i'll take whoever they uh whoever they offer me next that's kind of uh it ends up like that a lot of times where it's like who do you want to fight isn't necessarily uh who you're gonna fight an right, option right. versus like who they want you to fight like they'll just awesome. tell you they're like hey you're gonna fight this guy you're like okay yeah yeah, yeah. listen man I, i've been wanting to talk to you for a while uh, i just wanted you to pop in and say hi I uh, have a little quick interview uh, at my show. We just relaunched the podcast today, actually. And uh, you you and uh, my man, Jay, here, the birthday boy, uh, are my first two guests for the summer season. So I want to thank you very much for popping on and, uh, and saying hello to everybody. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. No problem, brother. We'll talk soon. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Chase.
What a great kid. Oh, very, very articulate. You know, and he actually, I was going to bring it up then. He actually, uh, Peter Barrett, the guy that he fought before this. Yep. He's <coughs> actually my uh, my old teammate. So, like, uh, when I watched, watching that one was tough. But um, he was, I would say Chase was losing that fight. But it, you could see that he was determined enough and didn't break mentally yeah. in that fight. Got the Eminari roll and got the leg lock. Third round, you know what I mean? So, oh, his, his jiu jitsu is just so impressive, it's so That's sharp, so good, <laughs> yep. you know. And I just love you know what I love about him is that, like, if you were if you were to put him in a room with a bunch of people and said, pick out the UFC mm -hmm. fighter, you, you just you, you wouldn't You'd never do know, it. You'd, definitely You'd never have know, no idea. You'd never know, like a mailman, before yeah. He looks but like anyway, him. I'm so glad that he came on, he's always someone that I've been wanting to talk to. So, are you hungry or what? I'm always hungry. There's a, there's a big Australian that's gonna feed you today. Where is he? Is he asleep out the back there or what? So check it out, guys. One thing that I like to do to all my guests, they come on here, they don't get paid for coming on. So I look to hook them up with the proper 12, with the title sport, and of course, with the tastiest, juiciest Australian pies in the business. The Aussie Project, a taste of Australia. <laughs> if you've never had a bit of Australian in you, <laughs> nope. it's going to happen right now. Nope. So um, these pies are specifically made from a secret recipe. And here he is. Come on in here, mate. Last time I saw a meat pie was Sweeney Todd. So Sweeney Todd. Oh, that's uh, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Woo! Jay, Jay Perrin, this is Alex Biffin. He is the owner Jay. of the Aussie Project. Chuck those headphones on, Alex. Yep. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, mate? Are all Australians huge? Or is hey, that like well, a... I'm Australian. I'm not huge. Okay, well, yeah. word. <laughs> <laughs> word. That's not true. My, my, strength, my strength and conditioning coach, Gavin, is also Australian. He's like your size. Yeah. But it's like it's like either you, your size, people, yeah. or like... Jenna Fabian, who's a tree. Yeah, I love you, Jenna. Don't hit me. Yeah, <laughs> she is. She's like a mountain. You yeah. know what I mean? Love her to death. Most mm. beautiful woman I've ever. I don't know what it is. Ever seen? I don't, I don't know what it is about the Aussies. You're, you're a big, but you're, he's a it country might, boy. He grew it up. Might, up. might be a beer thing. I don't know. We might be a beer of, thing. We drink lots of beer down here. Oh yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> what, so what's the? What's it? Foster's? That's your. Yeah, that's cat piss, Bro, mate. We don't drink <laughs> that. High stuff. Is that? No, we. That's cat piss. Look, man, I'm from. I'm from New England. It's brewed in Canada. We drink. Bud Light, which is legitimately Even more horse piss, <laughs> so it's and we love it. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. I can't say. But I did have a Foster's one time, and I was like, "This, this yeah. was the size of a baby." Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, "I'm like, <laughs> what? Why? Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what are we feeding you today? <clears throat> what we, okay, let me just duck over here to the stuff I prepared earlier. Yep. So I got a bit of a first show back. We went all right. All out. So we got. Here we go. And you're gonna you're gonna get to take these home too, Jay. Word. Cool. So tell us what you got here, Alex. Hey, so we got a bit of everything. We got the brand new one that I've just done, which is the cheesy ground beef with a potato. Ooh. Right. We got the steak and Guinness, which is a few a few vegetables with that steak. Uh, with that sorry, with that Guinness gravy. Okay. Then we got the OG. We got the chunky steak, which is our OG. It's a family recipe being passed down generation to generation. The sausage rolls. That's a pork sausage with our own flavouring. It's it's probably our most popular. We've got the uh, the butter chicken. Mm. Oh, here we go. Here we go. There All right. Is. So we got the butter chicken. We've got the cheesy steak. The sausage roll there. These are brand new. These are our lamingtons. I don't want to touch them with my fingers, but you can sort of see. Them there. Yeah, it's like an Australian cake. Yeah, it's, it's it's a butter sponge dipped in cocoa icing, rolled around in coconut flakes, and laid with cream and jam. Um, and then yeah, we we got like nine flavors now. So and it's a secret recipe, right? Yeah, they're all they're all family recipes. They're all Australian family recipes. We do free delivery anywhere in Las Vegas, and we've all, we've oh. also started getting them into places. We've got them in Pedal and Pour and a taste of coffee, and we've got like a bunch of new places coming as well. So. Wow! So all you, over Vegas. You're going to take oh. these home today, and then when you heat them up in the oven, when you get home and you mm. try one, make sure you give us a shout out and let us know what 100%, you think. Hundred percent, I will. Yeah. So. Hundred percent. What do you What do you do? You eat these every day. I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, like, I, especially when I'm cooking on those days that I'm cooking. Yeah. The, I mean, the, the stew in the middle, I mean, I really like it. Yeah. As do a lot of other people. Yeah. So um, it's kind of hard not to, you know, spoon myself out into, into a bowl and just sort of. A little off the top. Exactly. Yeah. And just sit in the corner and just eat there. Like, yep. yeah. Well, yeah, man. So they're going to be yours to take home today. you got a Fantastic. couple of days worth of food there, man. Word. So uh, I hope you're going to enjoy that. I will. Uh, he used to be in the Thunder From Down Under show. You know, the Aussie chip. Oh, the that, Aussie one? That's him down that's there. Him I was right going to say, when I I think Australian yeah. and Las Vegas. Can you, can you do an Australian under accent? Under from down under. <laughs> that's not too bad at all. That's actually. a knife. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, that's, that's not right. a knife. That's, that's how I figure that, that uh, Australian strippers, male strippers,
strippers say it, they just take out their their you you know, take dick, yeah. dick sock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like and they crocodile Dundee it, it real quick. Like that's, that's a knife. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So so uh we have come in here today, and I know I haven't seen you guys for a while. I don't like to really talk about personal shit that's happened to me, but I've been jumping through a lot of adversity over the last year, mm. uh, you know, especially the, the um, you know, we suffered with a bit of a few mental health issues and, and, of course, my alcohol addiction, which I'm happy to say that I am nine months sober today. Congratulations. Appreciate that. So um, I'm, I'm kind of glad to be getting back on the horse mm. with a little bit of a clear head. Um, so I'm glad that you guys have uh, have joined me once again on this little journey. I'm putting out this content, um, not for me, because I want to do it for you guys. I want to do these podcasts a little bit differently. I don't want to go into stats and because I fuck things up. I make mistakes. I say the wrong name. I say the wrong weight class. I, I want to talk to the, these guys as as human beings, as, as who they are. So if you can help me out on this journey. This is such a tough business, the podcast business, man. There are so many people doing it. Mm. I'm just a small channel, but I'm growing. I'm building. Um, you got to like it. you got to share. you got to comment. That helps me grow. And then in return, I can keep putting out all, all this awesome content. Mm. So what do you reckon, man? What do you mean? You happy with this, the, the cool little studio that we've got? Oh, here? this is lit in here. This yeah. is awesome. I love it. It's great. Um, yeah, first time I've ever really been in like a studio studio. Like I've been in um, like little rooms that people have yeah. like you said a ton of people do podcasts and yeah it's usually like in their bedroom yeah yeah right right <laughs> you're like you walk into some dude's house and he's yeah. like come into my bedroom and i'm like yeah right what <laughs> you know? what are we doing so this is this is super cool uh, in the how parade. much am i getting <laughs> and as soon as i saw all the the nerdy stuff i went oh this is gonna be fine we're gonna yeah. do great here so i suppose the whole purpose of this is to disarm the guests when they come in to make them feel comfortable if there was a piece of advice that you could give me as far as with what I'm doing, is there anything that you could say that I could maybe use to uh, continue on in my career? I think the, the the model you've got is, and I think that a lot of people um, don't realize, again, that fighters are people just like anybody else. You know what I mean? Like, we're not just these monsters that plug into stuff. A lot of, th of us think, a lot of people, pardon me, think that fighters are unintellectual people that don't, they just speak with their knuckles and throw their fists. But most of the time, a lot of us are very, very well well spoken, very articulate. Absolutely. And our, Funny. And because of our profession, we've gone through a lot of struggle. You know what I mean? Like tons of it, most of it. So like we have a lot of life experience, maybe even earlier than most people yeah. that it's, it's just nice to like poke into. You know what I mean? And every, every fighter that's been through like the ringer, like the rest of us have, have a lot of wisdom and a lot of insight to give. So, yeah. like talking to us on a human level, that's mm. obviously talk about our fights and promote us because that helps us. Mm -hmm. But to get people to when when people can connect with a fighter on a personal level, yeah, it it helps them grow a lot better. So, like you know, if you if you can do that and connect with and let people see that, hey, man, this guy's not a brute, mm. and he's not just you know slanging his knuckles everywhere. He actually has a lot to say. Yeah, then it, it helps us a lot. I think it humanizes us a little bit better. So that's I I honestly like the model already. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's great. You know, you've got some great people on your team. I love Ed Cap. I love Jason House. I love Jacob. I love all the boys. I've interviewed so many fighters from Iridium, and I've just had a fantastic experience with each and every one of them from from Vince Morales to <laughs> to Cam Cheetah to Vinny you name it yeah I've, I've, both my teammates uh both your teammates? Both my teammates. Um, geez, I've, I've, I've interviewed... Well, Cam's back in it. Did you see Cam's latest uh, post that he put? He's getting his, his hair done. With his hair? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were giving him a hard time about his hair like two months ago. <laughs> so that's we were. And that's why he's like, I can't take this shit from these people anymore. <laughs> and every time he tries to say anything, I just take off my hat and just put my hand through my hair. <laughs> like, it's luscious as hell. Yeah. So uh, is there anyone, anything you want to plug? Any of your sponsors? Hey, man, uh, uh, I don't have a ton of sponsors right now. Obviously, I rated him sports. Shout out to my manager, Lance. Um, everybody at Syndicate, look, I've grown so much as a person and as as a fighter, um, and understood this business a lot more since moving here. Um, you know, check out my fight, man. Like I, August twentieth, I'm fighting a Richie Lang. Uh, he's got uh, that's one name, like Cher. Um, and I, you know, I, it's going to be a barn burner. That guy is for sure going to try and fight me. He's not going to, you know, sit back. He's going to get right to want, it. Right? And I love that shit. Mm -hmm. I love it so. Um, you know, just check me out, man. And proof is in the pudding. You know, I, I will, I will talk as yeah. much as I need to. But, um, you know, if you if you rock with me, then I really appreciate you. If you don't, then that's okay too. I got a lot to prove to you. So, yeah. um, you know, 
check me out. Yeah. Follow me on Instagram, all those other things. I'm pretty funny as well. Um, but other than that, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll let my work do the talking, and y'all can decide whether or not you like me. I think you're going to have a multitude of fans. You're very articulate. Uh, you're a great down-to-earth guy. You speak very well. You're funny. I've checked out your Instagram. And the fact that you moved from home to come out here to pursue your dream Thank is you. very honorable, and it just shows what kind of character you have. Um, I will be always in your corner screaming you. uh, throughout the television or, or live, and uh, I want to thank you very much for coming on the podcast today. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you having me. For real, for real. This is really cool. Awesome. Biffo, thank you very much for coming. Meat pies. Yeah, Let's go. Pies. I want to thank my beautiful fiance over there because she did nine hours of editing yesterday, 10 hours of editing today, and uh, I'm going to keep her awake all night tonight too, actually. hey <laughs> Hey, listen, guys. For editing. <laughs> For editing. No, the, the, different thing. Okay, guys, listen, just really quickly. Title Sport, we've got a competition going on at the moment where you and a friend can come to Las Vegas for International Fight Week and meet the man himself, the notorious Conor McGregor. Here's what you do. This is now available at Walmart. You go to any Walmart here in the United States, pick yourself up some of this hemp-powered cryotherapy recovery spray. Take a photo of it. Tag Conor, tag Title Sport, tag Walmart. Put it on your feed, and we're going to announce the winner in a couple That's of why weeks. He's been tagging How? Walmart. I didn't know that. Like, I don't know where I just saw a post with Connor. He's like, he just has tagged Walmart, and yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. I'm like why? Well, this is available <laughs> in Walmart. I didn't now. know that. Okay. I can't wait for you to try this, bro. No, I'm going I, to I, when I, really, I go home. I'm going to give you another can of it too. I appreciate because, it. Um, this, this is the, when it comes to, like for fighters, for dancers, especially here in Las Vegas. There's so many dance companies on the Las Vegas Strip. I want to get this into like Cirque du Soleil, Chippendales, kind of things like that, because I know those guys have a lot of thunder lower... from down under. Yeah, fuck those guys. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh, so join that competition. Make sure you follow Title Sport on their Instagram. Follow Connor. McGregor and Walmart and uh, hey listen guys you could be partying here with us in Vegas mm. well that's it come to the end of an, my first show back after nine months away I was very nervous of course I had a fantastic guest the Joker I had Chase come in I've got my awesome uh, engineer Ian thank you so much for everything Ian I really appreciate everything that you do good to see my good friend Clint I love you bro thanks for coming in it's been two years since I've seen your head so it's great. Hey, listen, guys, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Thank you very much to all of our sponsors. And uh, check it out. This is me for my podcast, The Marcus Deegan Show. Take care. The Marcus Deegan Show. <laughs>